Hello, and welcome to the Brooklyn Rails 186th New Social Environment. I'm Emily Dean, a production assistant at the Rail, and I have the pleasure and privilege of being your MC today for a radical poetry reading curated by No Land. Every Wednesday, a guest curator invites a number of poets who they admire to the NSE to read political poetry. And we are so thrilled to have Lucia Hinojosa Gaxiola, Julie Izell Patton, Kate O'Kane, and Mary Norbert Court here with us today. To begin, I ask you to join me in acknowledging the Wappinger, Canarsie, Muncie, and Lenny Lenape people of the Delaware Nation and Shinnecock Indian Nation, the traditional owners of Lenape Hoking, the unceded land and waters on which we stand. The Brooklyn Rail acknowledges the illegal annexation of the Republic of Artsakh as a grave international injustice. We stand in support of the Armenian people and the global Armenian diaspora. Finally, the Brooklyn Rail stands in solidarity with the uprisings in response to the murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Tony McDade, Nina Pop, David McAddy, James Skurlock, Jamel Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Rayshard Brooks, Rhea Milton, Dominique Remy Fells, Toyan Salau, Walter Wallace Jr., and countless others we have lost to white supremacy and police violence in this country, and acknowledge that justice will come from the streets, from the nation demanding accountability and refusing to move on until Black Lives Matter in the eyes of the state. Before I introduce our curator, we'd like to begin with a brief moment of silence. Thank you. And now to introduce today's curator. No Land is an artist, poet, filmmaker, photographer, and otherwise born and working in New York City. Her work has been recognized for continuing the lineage of downtown NYC counterculture, honoring an intuitive vow towards creation. No Land's art evokes reverence for mystery and her creations serve as protest against all erasure of infinite possibility. As a poet and vocalist, she has performed in collaborative works internationally at Jazz Fest Berlin, Crossing Borders Festival in The Hog, Enclave Festival in Mexico City, La Mama Gallery NYC, the Kennedy Center DC, Rollette Intermedium, the University of New Haven, and more recently on New York City street corners during the 2020 pandemic. In 2018, she released Authentic Artifice, an art book of poetry and photographs published by Newest York, and she has been grateful to collaborate with luminaries such as Ann Waldman, Daniel Carter, Heroes Are Gang Leaders, Pat Steer, Fast Speaking Music, Joanna Mattery, and other special spirits. And No Land, take it away. Hello, everyone. You can hear me okay? Everything's working. Thank you for being with us. Um, I am going to do some poetry later, but I want to first tell you a bit about the vision in um, getting all these spirits together today. We have Lucia Hinojosa, uh, Kate O'Kane, Julie Ezell Patton, and Mary Norbert Corte. And that is between Mexico City, Philadelphia, um, Northern California, I'm in New York City, and Cleveland. So just going to tell you a bit about this vision of um, a connected net of spirits um, who hold down a certain frequency that I think is rare and special. And um, I just want to mention that all of the artists today are multifaceted, beyond poetry, many of them visual artists. Um, Kate has a beautiful book out and please investigate them further after this because they're multifaceted creatures like we all are. Uh, but just a little bit of vision about the, 
the day all here together. I see these spirits in my dreaming as some kind of sideshow troop of outlaw-esque beings. And by the way, no one is um, confined to my mythologizing of them. They are, they are beyond it. In my dreaming, I see the mystic who had to go, the one humbly sizing up St. Flag saluters, the renunciates, escaped nuns, spirit of the prima, circus runaways, witnesses to the courtroom theater, skeptical of the game as we were sold it, exiled flowers, hermitage, hermetic flower, reclusive, far gone and wanted, coming back, disappearance trick, shamanic wielding of mind and gut and beyond. Saw some spirits spiraling, sculpting away at the visions out along the roadside, swirling, strewn across our continent. Why do mystics have to hide? Who's that barking on the main stage? Aggression, poets took the refuge flight. The nun who had to go, where to? She doesn't need to know. And yet, some escaping the church and others sanctified by surrender to it. Some hermetic fishermen poets take a break from their solitude to run the town square. The bothness, the point being holiness can be milked of any mode, and the label isn't the essence, potency of sore blue zap thing, unnameable, Rambodian renounce, writing or write your way out through mad poet fever, mystic in the cave, a lonely reeler on a silent vow while speaking. Some poets don't write, some refuse to answer straight, negatively capable with them confusing your protest for incapability hidden in plain sight rumination fever empathic fever radicality as a child noticing who gets to eat skeptical of the institution as they call you up circus of contradiction reeling in the rings of the mind three acts going on at once at least speak in riddles outlaw on the roadside, invisibility, cloaked in poet lies. And the poet is always off stage somewhere eating red tape, somewhere unemployed psychic on a silent vow while speaking. Sorwana, Joan of Arc, Rambodian deprivation, Joan of Arc, caught between a rock and a hard place, Kaufman, silence. And some of this is stolen, and, and you can get mad at me, and I'll tell you about it later. Twilight comes over the monastery garden. Outside the window, the trees grow dim in the dusk. Woodcutters sing coming home across the fields. The chant of the monks answer from the forest. Birds come to the dew basins hidden among the flowers. Off through the bamboo, someone is playing a flute. I am still not yet old, but my heart is set on the life of a hermit. Right now I'm depriving myself as much as I can. Why? I want to be a poet and I am working at making myself a visionary. The problem is to attain the unknown by disorganizing all the senses. The suffering is immense, but you have to be strong and you have to be born a poet. It is not my doing at all. It is wrong to say I think one should say I am thought I is another. So what if a piece of wood discovers it is a violin if brass wakes as a bugle it is not its fault at all i am a spectator at the flowering of my thought i watch it i listen to it i draw a bow across a string a poet makes himself a visionary through a long boundless and systematic disorganization of the senses all form of love of suffering of madness he searches himself he exhausts within himself all poisons and preserves their essences, unspeakable torment. And if he is destroyed, attaining his visions, if demented, he finally loses the understanding of his visions, he will at least have seen them. So what if he is destroyed in ecstatic flight through things unheard of, unnameable? Other horrible workers will come and they will begin at the horizon where the first one has fallen. So that's my introduction, and um, we'll start with Lucia, 
and uh, Emily will introduce her and thanks for coming. Thank you so much, Nolan. That was such a beautiful introduction. Um, Lucia Hinojosa is an interdisciplinary artist and writer. Her time-based practice develops through ephemeral gestures that result in a corpus of text-based visual and sound pieces. She's the artistic director of Dissonaire, an experimental editorial project from Mexico City. She recently co-founded Rhizoma, a series of performance workshops led by an international poet collective for the imprisoned women of Santiago del Almoloya de Juarez, Estado de Mexico. And Lucia, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Nolan. That was a beautiful. And I am absolutely honored to read here. Thank you so much for this invitation. Um, so I have also a little introduction and some, and I'll, I will share some poems that are not mine first. Um, I would like to start by reading the Terigata, which is the songs of the woman, which are some of the earliest gatherings of poetry in the planet produced by women, probably created as oral poems or songs around the fourth century before Christ. Uh, BC. And I will read from uh, the book of Songs of the Sons and Daughters of Buddha, recently published by Shambhala and translated by Anne Waldman and Andrew Schelling. So this first poem is called Sakula Speaks. I first heard Buddha's teachings from a monk I called for a razor, cut my hair, called for a robe, gave up wealth, abandoned a son, left behind a daughter, renounced excitement, and went homeless. I gave up anger, then trained, ordained, remembering former lives. I once made a lamp offering all night long and was possessed of the heavenly eye the Dibakahu, the eye that sees the invisible, was clear, unblemished. I saw existence flash forth. I saw all my life's trappings as if they were not my own. Vacant, empty as a dream, slated to disappear. This other poem is called Tissa which is the name of the nun or the singer. Tissa, get with it. Don't let it pass you by. Those who miss it grieve when they're stuck in hell. Practice, practice. And the last poem is called Another Muta. Muta means freedom. I'm free ecstatically free. I'm free from three crooked things, the mortar, the pestle, and my husband with his own crooked thing. All that drags me back is cut, 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 cut. Reading these pieces by women writers that were edgy and defiant function today as reminders, as word amulets, as remedies, as shants, as memory devices. I think it's worth not only remembering, but really invoking them to perceive our own condition today, our continuum as species, as network, as community. Every atom has an internal life, said the thinker, the prophet, Hildegard von Bingen in the 12th century. Creation is a web. How do we practice this web? How do we hold it? How do we care for it? I like to think of spiritual practice as urgency, as the revolutionary discipline that started some 2,500 years ago. 
where the same elemental questions and relations to consciousness have persisted with or without a dogma. These questions might have traveled through forests and roads, and roads while seekers and ascetics begged for food, or these questions might have got locked up by doctrine in a church or a monastery. But their essential energy is the devotion to the mind towards wonder, endless curiosity, the devotion to the mind towards impulse and expansion, a commitment to figuring out while acknowledging social, political obstacles and not giving up. Hildegard von Bingen, as well as Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz, both nuns and writers from different periods and places, represent a radical political attitude of ethical action towards justice, intellectual freedom. They were fighters for women's rights. They both got into scandals and contestations. They were rebellious at the core. Yet celebrating life by questioning life, studying its design, observing oneself through meditation, creating a community of thinkers, becoming public intellectuals, and at the same time, honoring one's solitude, honoring the elasticity of time and how one might use it in the short lifetime. Hildegard's ecological consciousness and deep care for nature, the study of the body as herbalist, as a medical writer, as a psychotherapist, and an astounding composer, painter, just like Sor Juana, both artists with a scientific, witty mind who wrote, Sor Juana wrote the most philosophical, political, and scientific poem of her age in 1692, Primero Sueño. These pioneer thinkers represent an array of sensibilities that for me are rooted in a female poetics. The archetypes they've become today are very important because they are able to hold and to remind us of a mission, an attitude, a state of mind. The courage to name injustices and act upon them, the sensuousness of the mind, the importance of inner power and our relation to every living atom who also possess an inner life. And I will read now from Hildegard's medicine book. And I really like her chapter on ears. She says, the two ears are like two wings, which lead all the voices and tones in and out, just like wings carry the birds into the air. And then she has a remedy. If a person is deaf in one ear, they should breathe on a jasper stone so that it becomes warm and moist from their breath. Then they should place the stone immediately into their ear and close up the rest of the ear canal with soft cotton so that the warmth of the stone is transferred to the ear. In this way, they will recover their hearing. So with this in mind, with listening in mind, I will now read a series of poems that are part of a project in collaboration with my friend Sofia Casarín. And I wrote them this fall during the growing protests and feminist activist takeovers of a federal building in Mexico where victims of gender violence are still now demanding government inaction against feminicidios and gender violence in Mexico where 93% of crimes are not reported or even investigated. These poems are a response and a celebration to the growing phenomenon of painted, of smashed, of intervened public monuments by tireless feminists and victims. They're usually painted over male Mexican figures. And I think these painted monuments that keep getting wiped and cleaned again by the government after each protest are a symbol of our times. Along the choreographed mass performance pieces during protests, 
Both of these are a potent symbol that reveals other debates and other strategies to voice action and frustration. But these are rooted in a sensibility of a fluid, a liquid state of being as a tactic. This is the quote from Erika Martinez, the mother of a girl who was sexually abused and who publicly denounced AMLO, our president's outrage, in response to the painting over of a portrait of, of Francisco I. Madero, one of Mexico's presidents. It says, this painting, these lips, these flowers were painted by my daughter who was sexually abused when she was seven years old. I want to know how the president is outraged about the painting. Why isn't he outraged about the abuse of my daughter? These poems are called Wipe or Weep. Let's say the word fragility more than 365 times until it breaks. So we can enter the vacuum where the pulse of minerals, translucent fireworms and dawn palpitate with becoming, with becoming, with becoming. You are also this body, this body, this body. Contemplate the word that is the rock or wake up in the middle of a sentence. Telluric scriptures wash down material discourse. The fracture of a frontier is the ordinary process of your weeping. Political subversion inhabits in your hands, carrying all possible gestures. Come back to this rock cavity. Language, wipe or weep. Language, wipe or weep. The spell, the spell, agitate to turn over. As I write and think in the lead coming out of my pen, over the surface, always possible, always impossible of this blank paper, I think we can perpetually become. And there is no debt or difference between a theoretical body, a sensuous body, a body that is disappearing, an illiterate body, a precarious body, a technocrat's body, the body of a dead animal on the highway, a dissolution body in crisis, the body that can always be readjusted, can always be refuted, the body that cries, the forgotten body of someone else's, the body of water that we hold is fragmented in the illusion of nation, of madre patria, of border, of border, Border is an interactive mask. What is a body but a politics of location? And this last poem I wrote as well for Cecilia Vicuña. I wrote it thinking about this pro protest and thinking about her. Politics is not a discourse you can hold. It is not even language, but more like an insect traveling your pineal gland and moving your peripheries, dissolving the visible dimension of consciousness like an act of migration, like a scale of realities reacting to each other and moving all your forces and coming alive in the impossibility to voice a tongue, a migrating tongue, like the apparition of an organ or the elements morphing fire, air, water, ether, and earth. Your tongue is still moving in the absence of a desert grain, like the filament stroking all your erotism, erotism, erotism. Negative spaces open the thread like a canceled monument your nomadic insect touches this corpse. What is a body but a drift? A drift that has to be voiced. Thank you.
Oh, thank you so much, Lucia. That was so beautiful. And next we will hear from Julie Patton. She's a bug, a bird, a writer, town crier, free, a fool for you, part of an infinite W of poetry and song, hand me down. And Julie, I'm passing it over to you now. Greetings. It was, this is yet another time I'm sailing with you all after a storm has um, made its presence felt, breaking, cracking the trees and the rhythms of people's everyday life. Thank you for the invitation. I am at a friend's office on their um, uh, cell phone. So, and this is my hand waving hello. Some friends of ours have been waving goodbye and are now adrift and other lines writing. Greetings Bob Holman, Miguel Algarin, Louis Warsh, my friend Krishna Dini. Well done, well done on this learning tree. What it feels like to move through the world. May all beings come to possess happiness and the cause of happiness. May they come to be free from suffering and the cause of suffering. May they never separate. May they never separate. May they come to rest. May they come to rest. May they come to rest in the boundless papers they left behind. We're free to go through them, attached and unattached, unattached, unattached to loved ones. On this learning tree, underlying reality, we call forth our vast self, not the ones that say, great job, A, B, C, perfect, nice reading. The sound basis for all that is and the margins between us, a magical display. This is a political poem. This is a political poem. We are all adrift, made visible via sound. We are not what we think we are. We are what we speak. Stay, 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 stay afloat. Stay, stay, stay afloat. Stay, 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 stay still, still. Sail still, I live ever lit, high, strong, dangerous beauty. The part of writing, cell phoning, breath by breath. Notes, silent music, the desire to. <laughs> to throw up our hands. Hey, I keep you moving, crack vessels in our inner lives. Some don't want their pawns to end. This is the best sound, sound, meditate. Take King refuge to come Tim plate these moments of magical display. Go 
going out like a light. I can hardly hear what's in front of me. Utterly beautiful in every way. It's the protectors of this world and their generosity. This is a word body building moment. This sound comes to me. I bite off more than I chew. I talk back to language, rebel. I am not a poet. I am a pap air fool for words, spelling the unborn words, breaking into their humming, their humming. Are we afraid yet? How afraid to go deep in side the cave, the caving in, the covert, BC, before COVID. Thank you. That was kind of a mix, a mash of um, thoughts based on the vibration of just getting out of a car, <laughs> rushing through the slush, mesmerized by the drift of white snow in the air. And the ABCs abiding, perfect, special bleak ruling Invisible hand, fractured lands, altered realities. The Secrets of Divine Guidance from Joseph Rael. We do not exist to understand this truth. For most people, matter and movement truths, everyday observable, we call it odd simply the vast self dimensions and colors vibrating. That's the feel of this day. Thank you for listening. Have a good day. Peace. Thank you so much, Julie. It's always so amazing to hear you. Um, next, we will hear from Kate O'Kane. Kate O'Kane was born in Philadelphia and currently lives there with family. She attended a state university in Pennsylvania before spending two years as the Ann Waldman Fellow at the Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics at Naropa University. For most of her life, Kate worked in supermarkets, in kitchens, on farms, and in warehouses. Along with Devin Braha Waldman, Kate currently makes music in a band called Notable Deaths. Over to you, Kate. Thank you. <clears throat> so I, uh, I'm gonna be reading some poems from a book that I just was uh, honored to have published by Belladonna Press uh, and one new poem that uh, was published in the, <laughs> this is horrible, I forget the name. It's a, a, a really cool independent newspaper out of Boston, so run by uh, Ben Mazur. So uh, I appreciate them for giving my work a chance. Uh, 
And all right. Makes America beautiful. Okay. Okay. Still. Civil rights and civil liberties crime and juvenile delinquency poverty and the poor air and water pollution, the traffic jam, the consumer, drugs, hunger, racism, prisons, Police, Disease that fucking everyone's dying and shit. Yo, fucking that shit is made up, man. I don't know. Disease that fucking everyone's dying and shit. Yo, fucking that shit is made up, man. I don't know. Disease that fucking everyone's dying and shit. Yo, fucking masked, masked workers, masked workers covered. Masked workers covered up. Masked workers covered up all. Masked workers covered up all the. Masked workers covered up all the old. Masked workers covered up all the old signs. No. No body, no body, no body knows, no body knows what, no body knows what causes, no body knows what causes all. No body knows what causes all these. No body knows what causes all these new. No body knows what causes all these new syndromes we. No body knows what causes all these new syndromes. We have three, three, three people, three people were, three people were shot. Three people were shot under. Three people were shot under the. 
three people were shot under the L yesterday. You know, there was a time before this, 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 you know, there was a When your eyes burn in the swimming pool, thank Atomic Number 17, pale green chlorine, good for good clean fun, in the luckiest of swimming pools, and a godsend for 17th century's hexile mills. Exploitation of the global south could never have happened without you. Every aspirating Briton and French and Royal Scots Guard gave this noble gas a nod in 1915, pressing pissy claws to their mouths to ward off the pale yellow cloud, and we wonder today why the kiddie pool is always warm. Thank you, Carl Wilhelm Scheele, for isolating this particular isotope. The Anbar promised bobbings just wouldn't have been the same. 1,000 state offended insurgents agree chlorine compounds work for me outdated silver chloride photo paper surely explains the absence of any current wartime imagery on our front pages or on our feeds and after the war's end and democracy prevails expect water slides and tiki bars on your radioactive sand and don't forget goggles and gas masks and industrial cleaners with extra bleach for the blood on your hands hundred thousand million billion years ago a trinity of atoms exploded and inside that explosion occurred atomized intelligence two metal cones coming correct inside the vacuum This abundant element was first thinged into being in 1930s Germany, where scientists were tasked by you know who with developing a weapon, utilizing a hollow charge. Forget the sum of countless dead, at least it's easier than ever to always stay connected. Lithium is forcibly absorbed by folks strapped down to four point restraints who just can't stop asking questions like who really won the war and why? Who really won the war and why? Who really won the war and why? These daily dosages are still widely distributed on earth, but only in bottled form. Your non-compliance has been noted your information has been taken. Your communication privileges will be restored once we get you regulated and decide how to list your charge. Oh, just the usual hired thugs and the usual powerful black sedan. Oh, just the usual hired thugs and the usual powerful black sedan. Oh, just the usual hired thugs and the usual powerful black sedan. Oh, just the usual hired thugs and the usual powerful black sedan.
all programmable it's our nature always there ready to work good banking is good citizenship name your price a global asset under management delivering what's next a business of caring booked on safety if we say it we'll do it let's solve water trade the world inform enrich empower part of commerce science to medicine the new network is here all around you a collection of great banks rule the air ready in advance sour air we sanitize we arrange coincidence cleaner incidents citizens hooked on entertainment shooting forever through revenge fog delivering worth largely targeted bystanders urge default buy another gun fever forever Worldwide patients, Western terms, hooked on incidents, sabotage teams, design precise exercises, a flood of dollars, a golden jail, a license, silence, ritual sanitize, a deficient life, ecocide, thwarted a final sale. Pay no attention to the motorcade behind the icon. It is not a crime to sweat. In sickness, we wonder who will die, who will sleep, who will wake up tied to a cot. Hearts break easily. These words are not yours, but come from their dust, the color of bricks through the windows of an HMO, the color of good veins, the color of my useless state insurance card. If you'd have visited my city, I would have shown you the Museum of the American Revolution, which is, uh, I mean, was my favorite place to spit. I would have asked, will you sign my access card? Now I only want to know, will you tell my beloved hi? Drug rain, beloved hi, doubled over in bed, bedeviled. A hi is only devolved love, let all rulers grovel. Strategic imperatives, creative metrics, grief tests, violent recitatives, the other side of programming, rising hunger, a hard reset, a hard reset, a hard reset, ash of the frequency, lamppost surveillance, low planes, no planes, Make way for the stack and pack. Plastic water, metal milk, bots in the biome, bots in the biome. Renting to own, renting to own. Again, the ratings dictate carnage. Accredited data titans instruct agents to redact, goddammit. Inheriting debts, rancid agenda. Credit is a cage. Please don't walk on the grass. Hostile takeover in progress. Own me, new law. Let us recite a death of dodge. Tag, click, you're it. Tag, click, you're it. Tag, tag, click, click, you're it. No other credo. Enact tactical grace. A riot. Call to prayer. An incantation against our let in air. All actors lead to crises. All crises lead to plots. All plots lead to graves. All 
Graves lead to gravity. All gravity leads to spin. All spin leads to axes. All axes lead to points. All points lead to fingers. All fingers lead to nails. All nails lead to crosses. All crosses lead to wood. All wood leads to fire. All fire leads to warmth. All warmth leads to water. Go surfing the microwave. Wealthy teeth trapped in elite sneers. This will be our final season. So let the tanks roll into town. In for a penny, in for a pound. 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 I don't believe in the future. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Kate. That was so incredible. Um, next, we will hear from Mary Norbert Court. Mary, Nor Mary Norbert Court lives in a cabin at the bottom of a canyon between a rail line and a river. She lives in a neighborhood of tree huggers and loggers, boozers and stoners, socializers, feuders, loners, all of whom live along a dirt road in a kind of cranky amiability. This life feeds her work as do all the other lives she has lived for a very long time. And Mary, I just prompted you to activate your mic. Uh, Job to read now? Yeah. I'm going to do a couple of things that are current events. And then I am going to do some historical stuff. Eulogy for Diane de Prima. I want to be a fairy godmother, she said. I'm the right age now. I want to make everything perfect for everybody I meet. Not that I want to do good, particularly. Actually, I want control. Actually, I went to fairy godmother school once, she said. I was unworthy. The car broke down. The teacher was kind. She was more than kind. She was a genius who understood my close personal relationships with St. Anthony. She taught me spells, kind spells that work, have worked, will work, still work, and I remember them. You remember them, yes, remember them well, and yes, Diane, your voice is in them, and yes, Diane, yes, 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 and yes, and yes, Diane, siempre presente. The next poem uh, talks about lockdown of another kind um, that we have gone through in history and one that's rather recent. Um, and there's a bit of trivia associated with it. it um, it's got Balzac is mentioned. And Balzac was a gourmand 
who would knock back 50 oysters and a magnum of champagne and then go out on the town. So, winter. In the siege of Sarajevo, people had to burn their books to keep warm to cook. She burns pages before they become books, trash trees, good for two by fours, and paper. Make the fire first thing in morning, doubled over in cold. They had to burn books. They had to keep warm in a war, in a war. She was told the collected works of Balzac were enough for two meals. And the next one is pretty personal about a current event in my life when uh, I crashed my car and um, suffered some internal injuries, which brought this line to mind. The heart by way of the breath to the line. Charles Soft. It is soft. Up. Uh, in a bottle, a crystal bottle, a decanter containing clear, ambiguous air, containing bubbles, a possibility hanging around like unwanted lovers, milling around like a crowd of smoke. This should be enough breath to fill all the blank pages in the world, but it stops. It is soft. You were right, Charles Olson, old man, doctor to the struggle, listening so we don't explain the breathless as too abstract a word to stand on, scrape your feet, twist your ankle, cut your knee, sharp to the lookout for the next wave, the curled under foamed over, upended moat coming at us, a heavy swim drawn across our hesitation. Um, some people think these lines are not so dangerous, but as an Irish Catholic girl, I do. Dangerous lines. Neighbor children believe her house is made of gingerbread. She wonders about this when neighbor and neighbor's children come to visit. She heats her house with wood, cook stove, oven all winter long into freezing river, falling trees broken with frozen snow. She has been asked, interrogated, the hound of heaven truth. Are you? Well, are you? This we have dreamed. This we have feared. Are you this we have known? Winter stars crowd in on her. Gawkers at an accident. They lead neighbor children to her front yard. She has a ginger cat. There is a ghost in the tree. The little girl cries, Bruja! Neighbor children climb over her a flag of elves. They come holding on to adult men who then stand in her front yard telling her what's wrong with the place and drinking her coffee and drinking her wine, and drinking her dry of love, they never, never, never see. Her house is made of ginger. 
bread. It's been so for a thousand years. Um, a couple of, uh, I guess you'd call it Mendocino County history. The cottage of lost souls, 40 winters in the hole. Everything was thrown at them that winter. Every kind of storm, flood, split your throat, dust, mud, clay, veins, inheriting turns, snow deep enough to lose cattle, days that looked as if they came out of Dostoyevsky. She threw the bed out that afternoon after his boots, his jockey shorts, his despair. She tried every which way to get drive enough to get rid of him, he would not go. She did not want him to go. He would stay, staring at her from every shelf. Eventually, she got over all this. She understood the language of trees, whatever that was. She understood it indeed in her skin the way one takes in oil, yes, oil, and other materials. She swore never to get used to winter and light that turned its back. She has kept to her promise in good time, bargaining with God, in good faith, bargaining with the woods, with the whole world, to get her place in the great weaving, the great march, round and round again, picking up dust, feathers, coal, try to jewels. This is the cottage of lost souls, the one bereft, tempered by winters in the hole where everything everything, especially water, ends up. For light is a miser, more grasping every year, a piece of her, a tiny pound of flesh, exacted like taxes, like taxes, like taxes. And I think this is for the Root Canal. It used to be lines of spirit, filaments of the goddess, the queen of wands, this web of life and godly breath is still there, perhaps. Not now. Now it is all lines, gas lines, water lines going uphill coming back down, crisscross all over the place, run over by a sort of vehicle, dead or alive, truck, even a Maserati for a while. Electric lines gash their way into the house. The inverter bus is busy, busy, sound, scatters birds, chases mice away. Lines stretch into ditches, into her wild garden, the one where quail hide in the past. All the while, the pump pump, generator generates, water heater heat, trees burn in pieces cut by fossil fuel, diggers dig and dig and dig to hide all this all traveling along in ditches lined with roots big as Popeye's arm. Little ones like veins on back of ancient hands, ancient pipes laid down by the old man who had no pipe threader, so every 
he goes everywhere in 24 lakes. She lives in a house where stepladders talk as she walks by the mutter. They mutter. The mutter is meant to disturb, to keep her informed as to the nature of shaky ground. She runs around saying sorry, sorry to the redwood, not notice to the Douglas fir. There are clear distinctions in trees, even water. Watersheds. She used to think a watershed was a building used to hold water. Well, it is. Just not mechanized. And constructed. Next winter, water will come off the hill, take away soil she cannot scrape over this invasion of lime, bring it closer to the river, dump it, and go on. She will pray for rain to wash away her civilized sins, baptize her in the light of water's forgiveness, of water's hope, when the long river of root will grow around her heart as root ever has. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. That was so wonderful to hear. Um, next, we will go back to our curator today, Nolan, over to you. Hi, you can hear me? Yes, you can hear me? Yes, okay. Uh, thanks so much for Mary, Kate, Julie, Lucia, all of those are to me, I mean, everyone is an enormous spirit, but, you know, I feel a lot from them all, and I hope you'll explore their work further. The spirit comes through Zoom, but, you know, it's like a little bit different, you know. So I have some of their books and things I'll show you after. I'm just going to read a couple of recent things. On an evil night, July 1999, two lives got vanished by a case of lying. I, sight of retrial postponed, and the people swarming round below say, oh, well, that's just the way it goes. His meditation upon incarceration, a true roll of the dice. Will he wither his imagination, zap his dreams of artist life? Will he weep? Will he die by his own hand alone? Or will he build piece by piece a mind's utopic throne? He told you already, but you weren't there to hear. There were carnivals to attend and games to cheer. He told you before, but where were you at? He said the trial was a sham, and still you questioned that. He wrote the judge. We casted spells. Judge wouldn't budge. There he sits, poet magician, escape artist through the mind, a bulldog entwined, a journalist telling us who overdosed in there and died, fortune teller man can see through walls, can melt cement with one inspired glint, see a time, 22nd century vibe, where the idea of spirits in any kind of holding is ancient and unwise, karmically, Politilyrically, corrosively, uninspiredly, deathly.
Blue water for the suffering, blessed rock in the palm of the poet, encircling all things with an invisible ring of healing, crowns for the quiet, badges for the undercover scattered throughout the centuries, with ladders left propped behind the curtain for those taking their sweet artist time slow. Spider webs go falling on the archivists, assigning all things to proper time, place, color, language, library cells for the time, vacuumed business men who say they can do no wrong before their births. We did not pretend that we were in this for ease, for a basement of awards, halls of fang. We did not jump here, down here, to succeed. We jumped down here for a golden flash. This is a newer morphing object. It's called Putting on Minds. Hot for God, I dominate the shaman in a turquoise room of shooing the gods away for daily tasks. Toil in the chemical field, irradiating non-identity documents. God's thumb, pink stone, where God hides out, hoping to come upon a saint. Right now, I'm depriving myself as much as possible, and I'll just wait. I'll just wait. I'll keep praying by the window. Santo, santo, praying by the window like shamans throwing up the frequency. You think I don't know. Now you see her. Now you don't. The mystic who just had to go. You've been a liar. You better quit your lying. Sowing on the mountain, reaping in the valley, putting on minds. She appeared on a rhythmic corner, insect glow about her intersection of dust bowl and midnight cowboy, corner of glamorous nymph and hideous car crash, nexus of runaway train to Venus and shamanic fast, sunglasses of alter vision, soon you will vanish. How did you swim in the vast expanse? Were you putting us on to be a dust mite? To be a dust mite, to see a universe in a dust mite, refusing to get born, stay in a tiny, turquoise do drop and surrender all form let go of fiery sadness called abandoned blue desire the mind grew vast thoughts vanished before they arrived and one day ceased coming all together putting on minds tonguing green secrets trying to trace this woman with a translucent history scrutiny by her flashing window pane she abandoned the discarded spirits parade the chasing pennies operation gnawing on a wide and secret mind translucency trying to size up a translucent mind quitting is something they tried your eyes waddled looking for some flesh material of hers to tear into but like a jokester the bite you left wasn't even there she had slipped out her body and into another mind before your teeth could tear putting on minds is the veil yet lifted is the tomb still looted is the jungle still noises is the siren still spinning is the room still orating is the oil well gushing is the ink still sopping is the planet still distant is the note still swirling transient woman hard to scrutinize you could come up with a bit that you think might stick but on an oil slick you slip in and out of her myth now you see her now you don't putting on minds putting on minds think like hovercraft think like the notes twirling and hairpin turning think like insecto caught in inject Indra's jeweled net of souls. Think like shamans throwing up the frequencies, like jeweled curtains of tears on a veil of lies. Think like Hermes. Think like saint. Think like snakes surrounding the saint. Think like gossip being the devil's teal radio and do escape. Gossip being the devil's teal radio, do escape. Think like talking out both sides of your mouth. Who can keep up with invisible luck? Think like mutation, like viral hall of mirrors and spiraling. Think 
like aquatic bass booming from a tiny taste of nectar womb, tiny taste of nectar on the tip of tongue. Take a bat to tongue, take a bash of the bat to tongue to teach beware tongue, tasting tiny bit of nectar. Think like a bat being taken to a charcoal ice tongue. See a time. 32nd century vibe where the idea of spirits in any kind of holding is ancient, unwise, rubble demise. How many different types of minds, charcoal wounds with the gold words sprayed to the side. Think like how many different types of minds can you hold at a time? Wear you a fur trapper's mind, a thief's mind, a boxer's mind, a cop mind. Put on minds, costumes, folds of the robe like loba, like Hermes, like we ingratiate ourselves to our captor's minds. Putting on minds like putting on airs, putting on tears, putting on lies, putting on thoughts like costume skirts, ruffled shirts, rouge and teal makeup blushed on the mind. In the garden of eating high frequency vines, see a time. 32nd century vibe where the idea of thinking is unwise to align with just one mind is unwise mutable trick 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 slick the slip slough it off one mind fixtures one mind laws they think that despite some disagreements there is one language and we are all speaking it but you hung all your own associations with flowers on her flower and erected very tall tower phallically, phallusly the myth of reason. The planet was predominantly understood as a wild garden upon which millions of fences had been lashed, dangerously downcast into the minds of babies not yet born. Why so beautifully backdrop the vast carnival ingratiated to our captor's mind whose mind is it that you wear think like motorcycle on highway 999 think like lady sweeping up on the rings of saturn like a cat collecting coin at the end of a black rainbow on a night sun approaching everyone with a mind so vast thoughts vanished before they arrived Opening the bottled chest reliquary, smashed the stupid prince's arrogant teeth into it, shook up the enamel shards and used them as chalk for last painting, spit into master's mouth so very slow, they thought she didn't know. You think she doesn't know. Now you see her, now you don't. There she goes, always putting on minds. Um, just two little things. This is a poem of uh, Diane's. I'm getting a phone call and I'm paranoid that you can't hear me. You can hear me, yeah? Okay. Uh, this is uh, Diane de Prima piece, but I very rudely um, like messed with it, and I hope she won't be mad. I, I think I just got excited and just kind of started tinkering, and that's so horrible, and this is being recorded. So anyway, um, here we go. Uh, radical, stupid, idiotic, little bit out of touch maniacal, ridiculous, laughable, stupid, optimistic hope. Want to create heaven on earth. Diane de Prima's revolutionary letter number 23. A lack of faith is simply a lack of courage. One who says, I wish I could believe that. This seems broken, can't be fixed. Too impossible to imagine a solution means simply that he is a coward is pleased to be spectator to tragedy unfolding, is fatal, isn't a glow with possibility, pleased to be spectator on this scene where there are no spectators, where all kinds not actually working towards imagination and reimagination are working against it. As they lie, idly hands holded in laps, arms crossed, so fixed, holding up newspaper, sciences full of lies, wrapped around a steering wheel very tightly, 
on one more pleasure trip. And um, I think that's an important one to keep close in our seemingly hopeless time, we have to create our own imagination. Um, and one last one. When the gods of communication initially descended onto this planet, they were thieves, naming, naming, naming. There's been a massacre on mystery, the people's collective remembrance of their time in a hall of mirrors, battling a twisted pearl string of words that one couldn't argue clean with, couldn't fight straight with, an entangled vine that grew swooning into a cyclone hurricane that flooded the bedroom and overtook the plains and skies, encircled the earth like a dust cloud. Little delicate untwisters worked meekly and quietly for centuries at the bottom of the storm on the ground, detangling the vines, swirling messes of telepathic communication distresses. A new tangle sprung each instant and new workers kept coming with fine tooth detangling combs made of shining light, sat on the lookout for truth, for mercy, the angels of compassion, writhing out of the sea and cement. They continued coming and coming and coming and they will always keep being born and they continue at the horizon where the first ones have fallen. Thanks everyone. Um, and I just also wanted to just quickly tell you You know, Kate was mentioning her book, and I would love for all of these artists to, you know, keep in touch with you after this. Um, this is something that came out on uh, Mary Corte, which is uh, by Iris Cushing, who I think is here. And this is just a really beautiful um, little piece. It's called Into the Long, Long Time, How Mary Corte Saved the redwoods. It says the idea of an unmanaged forest is shocking. An unmanaged forest is like an unmanaged woman. Um, this is Disonare, which you might know from Lucia and uh, Diego. And this is their publication that comes out, I think, once a year. And it's very beautiful. And I also want to implore you to uh, look up um, Julie Patton's Let It Be archive, B-E-E, -E, um, and lots of uh, other beautiful artwork from Julie. She's someone I really admire. And then this is my little book, but I don't want to tell you about it. And thank you, and strange to be on Zoom, but it's it's good to be together and remember that we're all connected through the evil networks. And I'm done. Thank you. Thank you so much, No Land. Um, that was so incredible to hear. And thank you for bringing everyone together today. It's been a really beautiful reading. Um, thank you, Lucia. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Kate. And thank you, Mary. Um, thank you to everyone who tuned in today also. This October marks the Rails 20th anniversary, and we are celebrating all the way into 2021. So please consider making a year end contribution to keep the rail and our special projects free, relevant, and independent, like the NSE Lunchtime Series and We the Immigrants Project. Every amount matters to us and I'm sorry, our goal is to double last year's participation and reach 500 donors. Check out the chat for more information or ask one of our team. Um, and please join us tomorrow also at 1 p.m. for Common Ground, a conversation on the Oakland St. Dennis project, how culture makes the city. 
And please join us again next Wednesday for a radical poetry reading curated by Chris Martin. Um, you all in a moment will be able to activate your microphones and say goodbye as you leave. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No land. Really? Oh, Amazing. Thank you, Thank you so much, No Land. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Kate, really amazing. Julie, Julie. Julie. Hello. Hello. so good to have you back. Nice to see you both. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Diego, good to see you. Thank you, Nolan. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you. So amazing. Beautiful reading, Dakota. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kate. Beautiful. Thank you, Kate. Hey, Beautiful. Emma, Thank good you, to see you. And check out Kate's band, Notable Deaths. It's like, Wait, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, I heard Thank Devin you know, playing in the background. Thank Kate, that's pretty you. awesome. Thank she's, you. She's, she's coming to day. Zoom. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Hey, G. Hey, Diego. Ciao, Diego. Hi. How are you? Yeah. I'm good. Hi. I'm not sure. I feel <laughs> Nurture, nutritiously nurture. <laughs> Twenty years, indeed. Super inspired. People, look at people. Faces. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to zoom to new shopping mall. <laughs> A shopping mall. Shopping mall. Yeah. Oh man, funny, funny. No. Hi, <laughs> Julie. Hi, sweetie. Cat, mm. I love you too. I <laughs> <laughs> love you all. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for doing this. Love you. Thank you. Bye, Bye Hello, Julie. Bye. Thank you all. It's Nico. Nico Boogie Waggy. Oh, hi, Nico. I always love our Wednesday. Oh. Yes, <laughs> Thank you all. It was sublime. Thank you. Oh, look, man. Thank, Thank you Good for luck. making my day. Hey, bye. you're here. Hey, bye. Love you. <laughs> Mary, love you. thank you so much, Mary. Yes. Mary, that was beautiful. The tea Mary was beautiful. is a legend. Yeah, I see. Everybody. Everybody's a legend. It's great. Great, great poet. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we hear you. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Thank you very much. It was great fun to do today. Mm -hmm. I love you. Mary, thank you. I love your spellbound room. Well, thank you. Oh, Patrick. Um, the dogs. Uh, should be joining in momentarily. So if you hear some great roar, there are three massive hounds who live up in the dome on the hill where I uh, read from today. I usually live under the trees. And are you in the so poet? Are you in the poet shack right now or are you somewhere else? Uh, no, I'm not in the poet shack. I'm in the dome. Okay. Which is much like a circus tent. Mm. It has a kitchen and a living room and a bedroom. And it's all encased with this, I don't know, kind of funny skin. And it's all, um, you know, the great Canadian, what's his name, who invented domes and Buckminster really Fuller. Buckminster Fuller. Yeah. Buckminster Fuller, right. Right. The great man. Yes. So um hello. I don't hello. know who this is I'm talking to, but hello. Do you, do you see someone there? So yeah, I see a wonderful, well, I see Lauren right now for a second. But before Lauren, there was this gentleman, uh, rather portly, 
very nice, smiling. It might have been Buckminster Fuller. Who knows? <laughs> you know, I mean, he's wandering around somewhere under some dome. Oh, there he is. Who is this? Ah, his name is G. E. Swartz. Oh, how do you do, sir? Greetings. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Wonderful reading everyone today. Oh, yes. Thank what you. an enjoyable time. I want to introduce yeah. you to someone. Hey, Nola. Are you there? I, I'm here. Yeah, I'm, I'm still here. But, you know, I'm rapidly fading. So... Oh. I, I need to say goodbye. Nice meeting you. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank you. God bless everyone. God bless you and see you soon. Be well. Take Thank care. you. Be well. Stay safe. Bye all. You too. Bye. Well. Bye. Bye. Bye.